Okay, so this is a movie review that was kind of random because yesterday as I was looking on Tubi TV, I happened to see there is a movie called Checkpoint and it stars Bill Goldberg and Kenny Johnson. Kenny Johnson, if you don't know, was uh, on uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Hold on, let me see if I can get up to my series here. I think it's on this show. Hope it is. <sighs> no such luck. It's right here. Hold on. Me Let's see if I can point him out to y'all. All right. Put your series of the shield. Right there. All right, he's right here. Him right there. Kenny Johnson. In the film. He was in On the Shield and Beginning with Blade, where he gets uh, eaten by the, the vampires. But anyway, and it looked interesting. So I decided to check it out today. I had a little whoopsie with work this morning, and so while I was waiting for them to come pick me up, after they were getting done with the site we have, and they were gonna come pick me up. So I watched this while I was waiting, and I didn't finish it until after you know just now, five minutes ago. So the story revolves around uh, a vagrant homeless man played by Kenny Johnson, because you know. <clears throat> When you look like that, you know, you're a homeless man, you know. And they do nothing. Uh, he stumbles across a conspiracy. Some people in his hometown to... There's an assassination on a president or some kind of... Some kind of assassination attempt, terrorist movement, whatever. And so he has to put together a team of him and three other people to take down this thing so they don't succeed. And, yeah, so let's talk about this movie. First of all, they don't really do anything to make Kenny Johnson look like he's a homeless person. Other than, like, he's got no beard, he's clean shaven, all they do is they push his hair down and cover him in dirt and mud. That's it. That's it. And I'm sitting here watching this at the beginning, and I'm going, what happened? How, why is this guy just living? I know, I know there's a thing where, you know, Marines or Army soldiers, they come home and they live on the, on the streets and stuff like that. Veterans are living on the streets. That, that's a, you know, it's such a horrible thing, even nowadays, that happens. But he's, it's established this is his hometown. He grew up here. He knows people here. It's a small town. There would be someone, even there's TJ, played by Bill Goldberg. He wants to take him in, but he doesn't, you know. He's palling around with this other guy who's a terrible actor. And not to sound me, but I'm glad this character gets killed off because he's annoying. But he gets killed off only because Roy, that's Kenny Johnson's character in this movie, gives this guy his dog tags. And so, they uh, kill him. And so, there's this video that comes out, and Roy realizes that it's happening here. He tries to tell the sheriff. The sheriff doesn't believe him and locks him away. He tells one of the deputies to go and look, and he finds the dog tags. The only problem is, the sheriff is in on it. The sheriff, the big-ass deputy stacks played by... Um, Tyler Maine. We have some horror alumni in this. We got William Forsythe from Halloween 2017. Well, you know he's going to be queer. No, he says that line. Uh, there's uh, Tyler Maine from Halloween 20, 2007. Let's say 2017, 2007. Halloween 2007, you play Michael Myers. You have Kane Hodder, who is a uh, legendary 
Jason actor, even though he's not my favorite. Richard Brooker all the way. But, uh, yeah. Uh, and you have Bill Goldberg. There's another wrestler. His name is Brom. You may know him from Impact Wrestling. His time there. Very interesting, you know, thing. He has this, he's the, there's nothing to have the two wrestlers fight each other. Brom has this fight with Goldberg. I wanted to see Kane Hunter versus Goldberg. And after that fight with Brom, I'm like, okay, now let's get Kane Hunter versus Goldberg. And they shoot Kane Hunter in the back of the head. The woman he was with, for the short time he was in this film, shoots him in the back of the head. That's Kane Hunter's time. There's a part of the beginning of this. And then there's this little part towards the end, and he gets shot in the head, and that's it. Like, I better get Tyler Main versus Goldberg. Nope. Nope. The, the fight scenes. There's one horribly choreographed fight scene. That's really all we get. Otherwise, we get this little back and forth between Goldberg and Brown, which doesn't really do much. But this horribly choreographed fight scene is shown to us twice. We get it at the beginning of the film, out of context... Where this guy is talking about smoking cigarettes. And he looks like Kenny Johnson with no hair. Which is really weird. And then Kenny Johnson, you know, Roy comes up behind him. They have this fight. Stuff like that. Fight gets done. And then we transition to the rest of the film. And I thought, okay, this must be, like, <clears throat> I was, I was, what I was thinking when I was working. I was trying to go into my head. Was that this was a setup for why this is happening. Like, he killed this guy while he was in the service. And now the sheriff or somebody else is related to this guy getting revenge and is taken out on the United States. That's what I thought. No, because this scene actually takes place towards the climax of the film when they are trying to take down the bad guys. So it has nothing to do with anything, really. No connection other than just the fight scene. And I'm pretty sure they... Put it at the beginning of this too, just because they needed more runtime. Also, there's a it's a very they don't have to live, so we find out why Roy is living on the streets. Apparently, while he was in the service, his pregnant wife and children, and his parents who were visiting, died in a horrible tornado. That is the worst way. To explain a family's being killed off. You're, you're, you, and you have Goldberg sitting there delivering the lines. Your wife, your pregnant wife, your kids, and your parents, who just happened to be visiting, were killed by the tornado. And your home was destroyed, so you had nowhere to go. But we are shown throughout this film that TJ wants to help him. And the only reason I could think of, of why... Someone like Roy wouldn't accept the help was the writing of this film. We need him to be a homeless person so he can't accept help. But all the other characteristics of these characters say otherwise. He would have been staying with Goldberg. He wouldn't be on the streets. It makes no sense. Oh, and by the way, Roy sort of has a theme song in this film. For most of this film, whenever they show Roy, you hear, And here's a simple kind of man by Leonard Skinner. That's what you hear. The simple man song. And it plays almost every time they show him. Until the climax and then it's not. And I thought they were going to have it in the credits, but no, we got Everybody Wants to Rule the World. And we get this little goofy-ass credit sequence showing all the... Characters during all the actors doing what I assume is uh, was like burial and stuff. Now there are some good things in this. Like when it comes to action scenes, like shooting and stuff, not bad. Gore is kind of weird. I think it's mostly digital. This is, a, this is you can tell this is one of those cheap. You know, direct to video action films. You could tell that. You know. But I'm not kicking myself in the ass for watching it. I enjoyed it. Here's a little funny thing, though. So, like I said, I was watching this before I had to get picked up for work. You know, and I missed it. Anyway. 
So, as I'm watching this, you know, first half of a film sometimes is boring. Just, you know, mo mo like the first half of a film, sometimes exposition leading into other stuff. And so, right when we get to the, when you get, when you get to the part where it shows the, um, that the sheriff shows us that the sheriff is in on it, and Tyler the Main shoots the other deputy. That's when I get a text message saying, "Hey, we're on the way to get you." And I'm like, "Sure." Now that just picks up, and it does. I got home and I turned it on. The scene restarted for some reason, and I was able to watch it. And yeah, it, boom, boom. I mean, there's a talking scene where they explain the, the wife and kids thing and his parents and stuff like that. And you can say, "Yeah, he's given up on the world because." There's no one else left in the world except for that annoying guy he hangs out with. Oh, by the way, so that video. There's a video they show on the news that he sees. So, the scene before this is the annoying guy peeping through a hole, right? And he sees these people going to get killed. He is mistaken for a veteran and gets thrown in there too. Now, when he sees, looking in there, you can clearly tell that the Asian, Susie, the Asian owner of the diner, is one of them. Right? And the footage that they use on, for the news broadcast, is the same footage, only zoomed in a little bit to, you know, keep her face off the TV. But, it only cuts it off here. So, you're just seeing this. You can still tell who it is. It makes no sense. Like, you can still tell right now. It's Scotty. I know that mouth. You know? I, I do like her, uh... I do like her husband, though. Which, I find it weird that her husband didn't know about this. I thought he was going to be on it, but he's not. A, uh, his name is Kenny. Strangely enough. And there's a scene earlier on in the film where she's yelling at him and... Chinese or Japanese, whatever she is, Korean, I don't know. But and he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Rosetta Stone and I'm gonna learn what the, what the hell you saying to me. I don't know, he's funny. And then, like, when uh, the teacher lady, who's one of their allies, gets into a fight with her, she chokes her out, she chokes the, uh, you know, uh, Susie out. And Susie gets back up, she's like, she's possessed. And then, he, you know, her own husband, Kenny, shoots her in the back of the head and he's like, and she kind of looks at him, you know, the the, the, the teacher, the blonde, forget her name, Rebecca, looks at him and he's like, I don't know nothing about this shit. Another thing I did like is the, and it, and it, it goes into a negative, but you the interactions between William Forsyth and Fred Williamson are fantastic. You could tell, you know, they're supposed to be like oldest of friends from kindergarten, Right? You know, they said, we've known each other 42 years. Well, you guys are older than 42, but kindergarten is five. I don't know. But anyway, it, you know, and then once, I, once you find out that the sheriff is one of the bad guys, you're like, aww. Because they talk about this tunnel underneath Fred Williamson's house. And so that's how they're going to get to do what they need to do. And it actually ends in one of those tunnels where Fred Williamson shoots. And then he goes, friends killing friends, brothers killing brothers. It's not right. And he got William Forsyth. And he goes, I forgive you, Thomas. But Fred Williamson's character says that. I forgive you, Thomas. Kind of nice. But we get this big showdown. And... I understand what they were going for with this ending, but I think they handled it all wrong. So, you know, sacrificing yourself for your country, that's a thing with soldiers. But the, if they had actually done that with with, uh, with Roy, it would have worked. Instead, he just gets blasted with a grenade launcher or rocket launcher, whatever it is, and he succumbs to his injuries. In Goldberg's arms, basically. He goes, go be with your family, brother. Go be with your family. And he dies. And it's sad and everything. But through all the fighting, everything that he's gone through in this film, going on like a puss, 
just being shot <coughs> instead of going out sacrificing himself you know like what if like he he had one of the guys and the only way to you know he was connected he was stuck to him so he had to act a, you know undo a grenade and make it go off killing both of them you know that's a way but just this grenade launcher <laughs> Kind of, eh. I understand what you were, what they were going for. He's reunited with his family in the afterlife, you know, in death, reuniting with his family. I get that. I get that. I understand that. But still, <laughs> all this character's gone through in this film to die like that. Uh, well, what can I say about this film? It's okay. It's decent. I'm gonna give it a six. It's decent. I don't. I don't hate that I watched it. It's not an hour and a half of my time wasted at all. It's decent. Five out of five out of ten. So, what are your thoughts? Let me in the comments below if you've seen this. It's called Checkpoint. Leave your comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty. See you in the next one.